Toyota's brought us out to the middle of the Big Island in Hawaii to debut its all-new 2024 Grand Highlander massive three-row crossover. Let's get into it. <laughs> Behind the camera, we have a special guest today. Eric from Red Match TV provides awesome content. Make sure to check out his channel. But the first thing I want to do with the Grand Highlander is talk about the powertrains because we have three main different powertrains here. And let's fire it on because I want to get you guys to hear this thing. This is the top of the grade. This is a platinum model. Uh, there are only three trim levels. So you have XLE, you have Limited, and this is the platinum. So firing this four cylinder up, you can't even really hear it. Uh, unless the, the hood is open. And we found this out with other Toyota products with the same engine, this 2.4 turbo, provides over 200 and, what was it, 265 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. It is made it exclusively to an eight-speed auto. You can get it in front wheel drive, but this Platinum comes standard all-wheel drive. Uh, fuel economy, Eric drove it out here. We're getting into like 21, 22, something like that. And we'll do a zero to 60 and stuff, uh, or just play with acceleration here. It's, I don't know where we're gonna find a felt flat space here uh, on the big island, because there's just volcanoes everywhere, but we'll play with the acceleration. So let's lower this down. What we'll, we're also driving today, we'll try to drive the, the hybrid, the two and a half liter hybrid, which is capable of up to 36 miles per gallon. That's gonna be hard to beat in this segment. And there's also the hybrid max with this turbocharged engine mated to a, bat, a battery and a couple electric motors that gives you uh, 362 horsepower. So definitely stay tuned if you guys are a little bit more into the performance aspect of it. But Eric, your first impressions right here, what does it look like to you? I think it looks pretty good for a big boxy SUV. I mean, there's not a lot of directions that you can go in when you got a big SUV, but I think it looks appropriate and conservative, but not too conservative. You yeah. know, we're not talking about Range Rover. No, <laughs> no I think it's, it's very handsome. They, they kind of went very minimal with it and that's fine. Um, we have these 20 inch chrome wheels though, and you have two wheel sizes. The base XLE gets 18 inch, but yeah, Toyota's given this the, the chrome treatment here. It doesn't actually look bad uh, with this red paint color, but Eric and I both agree that it's not the ideal wheel choice for us. Let's come around to the front because I want to go over a couple things that are unique here to the platinum grade. All right, well, my impressions though, I get a lot of RAV4. Uh, from the design on the, the front of this vehicle. The headlights seem very similar to the RAV4 with these daytime running lights. Now the Hybrid Max have a different front end to this as a different grille here, and they have a much more pronounced lower lip. I'm actually digging how this looks with the glossy black grille here, as well as the more subdued, uh, like lack of lip, uh, lip spoiler, what do they call it, chin spoiler? Chin spoiler yeah. Yeah, I kind of like the, the more minimal look to this compared to the Hybrid Max. We go on that side, we already talked about the wheels. I guess we can go straight to the back. Um, I like how they have, didn't overdo the chrome around the windows. Just tasteful one strip there at the bottom. Uh, and it's glossy black for the rest of it. Looks pretty good. And I do like the large third tail light up here going across the back. So a lot of manufacturers are doing massive like light bar across, which we'll probably see in the Lexus Brethren to this, the TX. But we kind of have the lobster claws, which has been a design feature here in these last few years across Subaru, Honda. Toyota's doing their own, but it's really slim and, and wide. I think it looks quite good here. And we also have on every single model say Grand Highlander, so you can't mistake it for anything else. And on the back, you don't have visible dual exhaust. It does have dual exhaust, but only the Hybrid Max will give you the, the visible like circlets on the back. So let's go and open this up. Toyota, they need to have good cargo space back here. I was able to fit into this yesterday with a bag as well. I'll put that little picture in there for you. 20 cubic feet of cargo space behind the third row. That is super important. I actually did not look under here. We tried to look underneath here. We did see a jack, but we didn't see a spare tire. So we might, I might have to fact check that when I talk to Toyota. Now with standard back here, all you see that JBL sound system speaker, there are 11 speakers in here. It is standard on the limited and the platinum grades. And these seats are really thin in the back. They do fold flat. And when you get to about there, the headrest falls down. This kind of setup is actually quite flexible. I like how I, I let go of the lever. So it's not actually the most easy to use. It's pretty self-evident there. And it's not motorized as Eric pointed out. We were talking about that before. Like it is a bit finicky back there, but it is pre-production. So maybe it gets smoother here in the coming months when this comes to the market, which it's coming to the market in July for most summer, grades. The summer, summer. okay. So, so I'd say August. August. Now we have these straps back here, which does make it quite easy. And there are also lots of different grades of reclining in the back. There are kick sensors on here, but I'm just going to close it like that. I don't, I don't have the time for kick sensors right now. 
the, the moral of the story is gonna be how usable is that third row? And we have lots of customization here with the seats. You can fold them flat here. Uh, one, all right, if you wanted to uh, do that, that's how you get back in Toyota's got this seat or this little step that's real easy for you to climb into the back seat so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i'm going to sit behind this seat so you uh, eric can get a good view here look at check this out you know this seat is all the way back i believe maybe an inch more but i still have an inch of space back here and my head at six foot one is not touching so overall i'm pretty impressed and to be honest are adults ever really going in the back seat? Hardly ever. You got four seats up there that they would be sitting in and the kids get in the back. So um, speaking of back here, we have cup holders as well as a tablet holder and a USB-C on top of this handle, as well as vents at the top. So it is very well structured for long road trips. Toyota said that over and over in their presentation. This is uh, one of the best three row crossovers out there for big families and also decent on cargo space that we just showed. Now let's get into the second row we do have sunshades back here quite handy i think those are actually standard even on the xle gray which is nice you're checking out this gray interior it's either gray or black for most trims and i think the the platinum trims can get like an extra tan color as well so let's see here let's try to move this back the, the lever in the front does the slidey action tons of leg room i like the the all-weather floor mats here and on the hybrids or sorry the hybrids whether it's uh, the Hybrid Max, the normal hybrid, you get 12, uh, 1,500 watts of AC power. Here in the Platinum, you only get 100 watts of the turbo model. So it's not able to provide as much electronics power compared to the hybrid uh, counterparts. Now we have mount pockets on each side. The Platinum comes with ventilated and heated seats on the outboard seats, and also this panoramic roof, which is standard on Platinum as well. We have automatic side windows here, so that's great one touch. You guys also have this pass-through with a removable cup holder. Obviously, it's been removed. It snaps in. There's a couple hooks there. There it is. It snaps in. It's real easy to put in and remove. Uh, and heck, you don't even need to remove it to get kids into that third row. I haven't driven this car yet. Eric drove it up here, and uh, comfort level, at least from the passenger side, has been pretty impressive. These seats are very, very comfortable. Uh, they're not the most ornate or anything. Compared to like the Hybrid Max, they give you that ultra suede uh, interior on the seats. These are still very, very comfortable, very soft touch as well. These are heated and ventilated. In terms of uh, electronics here, we don't have a motorized tilting and telescopic steering wheel. You have to get a Lexus for that. Uh, but we have a 12 inch digital, whoop, the horn works. We have a 12 inch digital screen here. It looks like it's taken out of uh, something like the, the Crown, for example. Um, and that is standard on the, the mid grade as well as the top grade. The base grade will get a seven inch screen. Uh, what is standard though is this massive 12 inch screen across all grades. And the functionality here with the climate control is great. It's very easy to turn off and on the fans as well as your, like everything's just very functional. And Eric pointed out earlier, like everything's very symmetrical. You have circles here on each side for two different functions, engine start and then USBs. You have seven USBs in this car. You have one, two, three, and then there, uh, USBs for the outboard passengers on the second and third row as well. Um, driving modes, you have sport, normal, and eco, and then you also have mud and sand and rock and dirt for your off-roading of downhill uh, control, and then if you count snow mode as an extra mode as well. So here's your, your armrest that doubles as a very functional I know storage area. Uh, there is a tray in there that's holding sunglasses and keys right now, and it's very deep storage. Uh, cup holders is something Toyota's really proud of. You can put a, a massive tumbler on this side, and then two normal cups here. And then you also have a wireless charger here if you don't feel like using the wired. And speaking of wireless, you have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto with this uh, new Toyota interface as well. Steering wheel quality is quite good. This leather, leather steering stitching isn't perfect. Uh, but it is pre-production it still looks pretty good overall and i like having all these physical buttons here you have radar cruise control lane keep assist etc uh, etc et as well as for the first time ever for a toyota you have the platinum does facial recognition which is a toyota first and for, for me and my wife we're about a foot difference in height and every time we get in our minivan we have to rearrange the seat everything about it the mirrors this could recognize your face and change all of that for you with this infrared sensor right here. Really, that's like the quick walk around for the interior. Oh, we also have a head-up display. You guys can barely see that on the GoPro there. It, uh, I'll talk more about it when we're driving, but I think it's that's a good segue to start driving. <laughs> oh no. Can we get around? I don't know if I can get around that. Oh, we can, oh, get, we around. can get around. Yeah. Hey. You know, you, you know here, we're doing some extreme uh, off-roading here. <laughs> 
I think we can get around this this Kia. I don't think we're gonna get high centered. We got all wheel drive. We got all wheel drive. I'm just letting it island. You don't. Let's do a rock rock right here. I just put it in rock and dirt. And it does have downhill assist control if I wanted to do it. <laughs> but there we go. <laughs> that that hey, downhill was not that big. <laughs> it, it, it passed. It passed the off-roading test <laughs> with flying colors. That's even with all-wheel drive. That's still more than what most people are going to take on their uh, Grand Highlander for sure. It does have pretty decent ground clearance. I don't remember what it is exactly, but looking underneath I'm say it, it's eight or nine. I know that's a big difference, but it, <laughs> I'll put it in the I'll put it in the the notes here. But let's just roll into the gas. Uphill. Shift was pretty pretty satisfying there with the eight speed. Yeah, yeah. So we're driving the new Grand Highlander. It's a. This is actually the first time I've sat in the driver's seat, so this is pretty exciting. Um, I have Android Auto pulled up here. It doesn't pull up in the head-up display, uh, but it does give me a little indicator on the MID, which is kind of nice. And I can also have the map pull up, I think, here as well, but that's only if you're using the inbuilt software. Right. I think typically on Toyota systems, if you have an Apple device, you're going to be able to pull up the maps if you use Apple Maps on the center display, or rather the driver information display. Gotcha. So what do you think of the ride quality? The ride quality in here is, you know, at low speeds we found out that it's very soft and buttery. Um, and right now this road is fantastic. So we're not, you know, it just feels like a cloud, but we did hit some bumpy stuff on the way up and it was pretty rough. I don't know if that was because of the vehicle or of how bad the road was. I think maybe a little bit of both. The, the vehicle, the road was pretty bad. There's a lot of, this is, we're driving over a lava here in Hawaii yeah. and the road, that was a very, very heavily traveled road. A lot of trucks on it. We've seen a lot of mm -hmm. heavy vehicles on it. So it's pretty broken up and it didn't like the really broken up pavement. I feel like the yeah. the shock damping just didn't like it that much. Mm -hmm. But the spring rate in here is really good. It's got sort of just the right spring, but you've got just a little bit of softness, so you sort of float over mm -hmm. some of the minor imperfections. Yeah, no, it, overall it's, it's a pretty good ride quality. Um, you know, I drove the CX-90 a couple weeks ago. I would say overall that is a better a better ride but i also had it in perfect perfect road conditions as well you're in, you're in, in florida yeah yeah in florida in terms of sportiness there's not much going on the engine doesn't feel that sporty i know the hybrid max is going to be a different situation um it, this, this is just everyday vanilla in my opinion with with everything about this vehicle i know you like kind of the, the more upscale feel in here but after coming out of the, like the cx90 uh, but that is a more expensive, that, just slightly more expensive, but that is like indistinguishable from uh, mainstream luxury. This is definitely not luxury. In, right, yeah. right. Well, that's where that's where Mazda is going. This is sort of near Lexus level, but Toyota always needs to separate a little bit from yeah. Lexus and Toyota. So not to say that this is not luxurious. Nice. I think it's that's very, nice. very nice, yeah. actually. You're just not going to get that Lexus grade no. quality. They want you here. to buy the TX instead if you <laughs> yes, want. They, do. they can't make this too elaborate and they got to make it to a price point. Uh, this thing starts around 43K, tops around in the upper 50s, maybe with some options, maybe even over 60K. If you're spending that much, man, there's uh, it's <laughs> that's luxury territory. So I have set the radar cruise control. Um, I do have the uh, steering assist on right now. It does come up in the head up display, you know, with color. The green is symbolizing that it's locked on, that the driving uh, assistance is helping you quite a bit. And also there's blue uh, to let you know, like your radar cruise control distancing, which is pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, the, the head up display is actually pretty pretty clear here. Maybe not the brightest, but we actually haven't played with the settings a whole lot. It reminds me a lot of like the RZ or the Lexus NX head up display, just not quite as customizable yeah. as those. It's a nice, simple display, mm -hmm. and I'm not a fan of, whoa, that was a rock. Was that, that a rock? That was a rock that flew at us <laughs> oh, hit the that's... windshield. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the windshield uh, endured it, at least for now. <laughs> that was the durability test. Yeah, it was a dur <laughs> Hey, which, thank you, Rock, because uh, this does have acoustic glass standard on all grades for the windshield and these side windows. So let's, I guess we can talk about, uh, well, there's well, a nice there's, forerunner, but we can talk about quietness. Right, well, there's something that they mentioned, which is these have, all the trim levels have active noise cancellation. 
Oh, okay. I don't know if this is on by default, but it is very quiet in here. So somehow with microphones quiet. and the speakers, and I could be speaking, I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. my understanding is they're doing some active noise cancellation here, mm -hmm. probably with the speakers and probably with the microphone. It's very quiet in here. Just listen to the zen look. Yeah, yeah no, there's no <laughs> creaks or rattles going on. I mean, you do you do feel and hear a little bit through, uh, you know, the, the undercarriage, but for the most part, like, that Nissan lifted Frontier, and even these lifted trucks, it's not, it's not, it's pretty quiet. It's pretty pleasant. It's pretty quiet yeah. on here, actually, and that's yep. something that you don't always get with the larger SUVs. You tend to, if they're saving a little bit of money, mm -hmm. you tend to get a little bit of less insulation mm -hmm. and perhaps some less, you yeah, know, I don't even hear the engine at all, and it's it, it's it's putting some extra gas to get up these hills, mm -hmm. um, and yet it has a proactive driving assist. So, uh, in a car like this, I actually don't mind it. So what that does is it can slow slow you down around turns, um, and I, you can bring the car to a stop. It it really is like easy button driving. And when I'm in Hawaii, I'm in easy mode right now. Like, what is it going to do when like it's slowed down to take this turn? You know, obviously these lines are like perfect. I'm gonna take over because there's a car coming, but like that's really impressive what it's able to do. Um, it's it's like its own little chauffeur. Of course, you know, probably just keep your hands on the on the wheel most of the time. And that was the lane departure alert letting me know. Uh, but the car kind of like steered me there anyways. Yeah, they're, gently. they're moving towards the system. They have it in the Prius right now too. And this yep. is part of Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. And it's right. more active than it was before. We're used to sort of just bounce around in the lane with the lane centering. Oh no. This also controls your throttle too. So it feels like you're going into a corner too fast. It's going to actively. Right. Yeah, so it's, you can yep. override it easily too. Just put your foot on the gas, turn the <laughs> wheel. <laughs> that was a pretty aggressive turn. It didn't work that great last time, but that's, you know, in, in a situation like this, you want to be taking over anyways. These are very aggressive turns, oncoming traffic. Well, speaking of safety, we get the uh, 360 camera in here. The base crate doesn't come with parking sensors. And for me as a family man, like parking sensors in a large vehicle are so important. Yes, you get a backup camera, which is mandated, but that is a tough pill to swallow. You have to go to the limited grade to get the parking sensors and then here to get the 360 camera on the platinum grade. I think that's a big deal, especially with a large vehicle, like you said. And if you live in an urban setting where you've got, you know, a tight driveway. 99% of these are going to be in an urban setting, you know, and like you go into the parking lot, you know, the Costco or whatever, you want to have, you know, the most safety features and parking features that you can get. And, you know, you're going to have to spend the extra money to get them. That, that's the upgrade strategy. Yep, they got it down. <laughs> but at least blind spot monitor is standard. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Toyota Safety Sense is standard on all of their vehicles right now. So sure. You're basically, you're going to get, as they move through the vehicle lineup, they're going to put Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 in all of the vehicles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as they move forward. Yeah, and that's a great point. You put that up there. Um, I just got done, drive, done driving the Sequoia, uh, which is at the top of the three row SUV product stack for Toyota, right? A very different vehicle, very focused maybe on towing and, um, you know, maybe extreme off roading because it can do that with that body on frame nature. Um, but the safety features on that were not that great. There's no way it could have helped me guide throughout those twisties back there. Um, I think it has more of that bouncing ping pong effect because it's, uh, I think, Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. 2.5 in that, yeah. yeah they, haven't, here, they haven't upgraded to that. That vehicle hasn't yeah. been moved up to the so, new system yet. Yeah, if you're considering between this and the Sequoia, if you're not towing or you have decent, you're gonna be driving mostly on road, I'd be picking this every single time and saving money along the way because that gets up to about eighty thousand. Sequoia starts at, a, mm, I forget the number, but like close to sixty, I think. It's, it's sixty to eighty, roughly. Yeah. 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 No, this is this is, and Toyota knows that they hardly sell any Sequoias, and they will be selling over a hundred thousand. I believe they want to make up to eventually once production's ramped up, one hundred fifty thousand per year, somewhere around there. And that reminds me of the the product mix. The first year, so here in twenty twenty three, it'll be seventy five percent of this gas model. Uh, and Eric and I both agree that that hybrid, even though it's the slowest, that is going to provide what the, most families can benefit the most from, and that is 35, 36 miles per gallon. That's to me the best value proposition because you pay absolutely whatever you're going to pay a little bit more, and they have it's only 1500 bucks more. Yeah, so. they've yeah. got a fairly uh, extensive pricing structure for all the different grades and all the different trim levels, mm -hmm. and getting 
into the hybrid, I think, is just a little bit extra money. It's going to save so much money over the long term. If yeah. you're going to keep this for a while. And just less time uh, away from the family filling up the, the, <laughs> the SUV. This, in a hybrid trim, with its 17 plus gallon tank, you can get 600 miles of range. Yeah. Fill it up in five minutes and you're back on the road. And Toyota really marketed this as the ultimate road trip vehicle. I still would say the Sienna is probably better because yes. I'm a minivan enthusiast, long live the minivan. But you know, my wife, she would rather have an SUV. She just knows that practicality speaking, a minivan is easiest for us. But this is for those people, hey, I want that best of both worlds. Give me the large interior capacity for cargo and people. Give me the hybrid or just the option of the hybrid. and. You know, you can have your cake and eat it too with this vehicle, essentially, with the, the versatility of it. Yeah, I agree. And just, you know, back to that, that MPG point, we're talking about a difference of 22 miles per gallon versus 36. It's that huge. is huge. Yeah. That's going to save so much money on gas. That $1,500 difference, you're going to make that up in probably, if you drive a lot, probably a oh, year. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, depending on where you live, too. California would be fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that up. $5 a gallon in California. Here in Hawaii, it's $6 a gallon. Oh, that's not too bad. It's not, it's not that bad. You know, but most people are driving tacos out here and it doesn't, it doesn't phase them. <laughs> right. I'm looking forward to testing out the Hybrid Max. So in this Platinum version, yeah. you can only get the base 2.4 liter engine and the Hybrid Max. Yeah, so no Hybrid in the, the top trim, which is strange to so, me. It's a weird choice considering they've got, I count it 10 different combinations already. Why not just make it 11? Yeah. Like if they're going to do this strategy where they have all these different options, why not just put the hybrid in here too? Because I think there's yeah. there would be a market for that. So we're going to flip it into sport mode here. I like the little animation that it gives. It is slightly downhill, but find a flat spot here uh, in Hawaii where we're at. Where we're at. I can torque break it to about 2300 RPM. This is strong. Oh man, those shifts are satisfying with that yeah. pedal down. They're 60. There you know, is. Toyota says mid sevens for this grade. What do you uh, think it is? Uh, we were down downhill. It's probably like 7.6 or something. 8.1. 8.1, yeah. So maybe because we were at altitude. <laughs> we are. At a, we actually were at a little bit of altitude, but that's pretty decent for yeah. a pretty large heavy vehicle. I think yeah. no complaints really. No, no. I you know I think it's serviceable. Um, it's you know if you want that performance, you're getting the hybrid max. Simple as that. This is just the uh, I don't really care. I just wanted to to. Uh, meet the, the the needs and demands of the family and that's what this, this is the basic workhorse here i think the dealers are going to be stocking the platinums probably mostly with hybrid maxes i mean that's going to be the dealer yeah. strategy i so don't think they'll make too many in this grade it's going to be hard to find this with gas you're just gonna personally i like this upper level trim i like all the niceties that you get in here i like the wood i like the seats and all that mm -hmm. so if i were in the market for this I probably would just, I'd like to get the hybrid, but I'd probably just get the hybrid max and just go gotcha. for it because, yeah. you know, I like all the toys personally. Personally, like I, you guys know I'm a Prius guy, so I'd be getting the Prius version of this, which is the hybrid and I could be getting the limited trim and since I'm in Florida, front wheel drive be fine, save a couple, you know, a couple bucks there and be happy to get 37 miles per gallon with parking sensors. Really, that's all I need. And uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this. And man, I you know the Highlander, it it is. I would pick this over the normal Highlander every single time. There's just more space in here, considering mm -hmm. the price. The premium. looks are better too. <laughs> yeah, it looks better. Yeah. The price premium is not that big actually, so it seems to me getting what even in the baser versions the xle is more of a luxurious kind of experience still, i think it's still yeah i would you know personally i think this is the way to go yeah absolutely well we're signing out from uh the all-new grand highlander make sure to check out eric's channel Rub Match tv uh, and also check out all the additional coverage uh from out here in hawaii on the other trims and other powertrains on this uh, grand highlander as well as the uh taco news and the taco hands-on stuff Long live the Tacoma. We're in the land of the Tacoma. It's been a pretty cool experience out here. So signing out. Eric, do you want to say anything? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate right. it. No worries. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.